Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. I'm so happy that you didn't do your um, your vodcast TV voice, the one you do for the adverts. Which vodcast TV voice? You you interrupted her. Oh, sorry. You're watching a vodcast TV <laughs> <That's> production. <laughs> I'll voice over better you now. Shall we actually start the podcast uh, now? Uh, no, no, no. I thought it started already. Sorry. That's I'm not just, the start of the Okay, I'm sorry. We need to advertise vodcast TV before we start. Okay. I'm probably keeping all of this in anyway. I'm sorry. Bro. Let's go. I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Vodcast TV, Johannesburg's premier shared podcast studio platform. I did well. I started well. Yeah, yeah, you did well. I was just, I was trying to throw you off, but yeah. uh, you were good. I did, I did, yeah. I did okay for the yeah, beginning, yeah, but then well. I laughed, well. which yeah. is your job. I mean, that's what you do. At least it was, it was. I mean, I don't know how often it is for me to do. It's your job. It's say. maybe not get paid job, but it's a job. Yeah, it's. I mean. Job is job, but it hasn't um, okay, pandemic Let's, let's start this thing. Let's start okay, this thing. Sorry. I think this is why Bobby Lee has a rule that like the, the guest isn't allowed to speak. Yeah. Until, you speak. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. I'll until wait. I say your name. Okay. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. This episode of the Mark and Martin's Revolution is brought to you by Vodcast TV, Johannesburg's premier shared podcast studio platform. If you've ever wanted to host your own podcast for yourself or your business, there's simply never been a better place to do it. Visit vodcasttv.com forward slash revolution to get a discount on your first order of a podcast or vodcast series. A revolution is a fundamental and relatively sudden change in political power. An organization which occurs when the population re re revolt. revolts. This is the Marco Martins Revolution, powered by Vodcast TV. Visit VodcastTV.com for more. Today on my show, I have Mr. Podcast himself, Thank you. known as Senor Podcast in South America. <laughs> Podcast, <laughs> puppy podcast across the Southern American Hemisphere. countries. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I'm, I'm just waiting for my name so I can speak now. Mr. Simi Arif. Yes, thank you. Hello, Lesser Marco, known somebodies. Yeah, good podcast there, bro. The number eight. Africa's, the eighth, Africa's, Africa's eighth. eighth best podcast. Right. I just want to ask one question because I was listening to your intro. Yes. And now I've got so many questions. First one, what's a shared, uh, pre a shared premier platform? Shared podcast studio platform. Yeah. Janusburg's premier. Yeah. Like the okay, premier Jan league. Yeah, premier. Right? Yeah. Shared, shared as yeah. in it does uh, you don't have to go build your own podcast studio so oh, you're sharing costs and usage of the studio okay, okay. so because like the shared office space model it's yeah, the yeah, same sort of thing yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, shared yeah. podcast yeah. studio platform yeah we work but with the owners still employed mm. yeah that's, that's exactly. basically it yeah. right because <laughs> you know we work no longer exists anywhere else like only in this country they went under everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, they went under everywhere, but we had just put the signage up. So we were just like, we work. And then they're like, we are broke. And then they're like, what? But we, with the building. And they're like, yeah. The thing is, they it. were investing because it was growing, right? The yeah. shared office space thing was just bustling. Yeah, they, and then um, the pandemic ruined their model no, 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 internationally. No, 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 no. They uh, overvalued their company. That's what happened. Mm. They they went to go trade uh, publicly and, and they valued their company at like, I think it was like 3 billion USD. And then someone came back with a valuation of like under uh, under a billion. And, and like, the mm -mm. and the other thing is that your your business model is very copyable. Yeah, right. Yeah, other people office. can do it. It's, it's a offices. shared office space. Mm. Mm, come on. I mean, it's nice, but I mean, like, cool. It's not. It's very cool. I like it. Yeah. I like the concept. The sort of models had um, podcast studios in them. That's that's cool. Yeah, that's why when uh, I was looking for podcast space before I started using you, I had contacted WeWork and they're like, oh, we don't have a studio, mm. um, but we've got a boardroom. I go, okay, thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of guys who started booking out boardrooms in these places to try and do like single episode podcasts, mm -hmm. but it's more expensive than having. Yeah, a but a boardroom will always sound like a boardroom. You and I both know as sound people mm. that a boardroom will sound like a boardroom as much as sitting outside in traffic would sound like sitting outside in traffic. Mm. A podcast studio would sound like a podcast studio. That's the reason why people like. That's the reason why I wanted to. I use your services. Because I'm just like, it sounds like a studio. I know the quality I'm getting, you know. Mm. I don't have to worry about, uh, there's someone that's going to hoot now or someone's going to open the door and go, sorry, is this, this room being used? Like, yes, of course it's being used. There's two microphones in here. What are you thinking? 
So yeah, like, that's the main reason why. And then you have to edit. Yeah. I hate editing. I'm hoping that we make as few mistakes as possible, although we've completely fucked up the whole intro beginning of this whole thing. No, no, it's I hope it's at least funny so I can just keep it. That's your job. I've mm. got tons of editing to do, so mm. I, I feel your pain. People actually don't understand. I don't know about you, but for me, if a podcast is an hour, it'll take me three hours to finish it. Minimum. Yeah. yeah. And, like that's, and you're talking about audio only. Yeah. Now yeah, I yeah. imagine trying to like color correct Dude and video. stuff with video as well. Yeah, you must make me look nice. Eh? Mm. Please. Of course. Please. So what do people do here on the Marco Martins Revolution? We just talk. Smack. Just talk. We just talk smack. I don't, I, don't have, I don't have much I don't have like to speak features. about, bro. I don't have like features. Okay, can Should I, I introduce, introduce you? features? Ah, uh, nah. I think you said No, but that's your feature. Nah, nah. Nah. I, I want to interview you, bro. I want to ask thing. you something. I want to ask okay. you something. Why a podcast studio in a pandemic? Why? Well, because I started it before a pandemic. Mm-hmm. So that's, mm. you know, that throws that yeah, out. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. And I threw everything at it, so I had to stick with it. And I've, I've wanted to. I love it. Do you, do you dig, is like podcasting your thing? Is that like the thing that you want to be known for? Uh, so how I got into podcasting and radio in general. Yeah. So um, in high school, I went to the National School of Arts yeah. for music. I'm a drummer and a percussionist. Did you play for the Polytones? I didn't play for your the Polytones. Your life sucks, so bro. Your mm. life sucks. You don't then. matter. Yeah, you don't really, I love Polytones. I love the Polytones. I'm sorry. I know. I'm, I'm a big fan of the Polytones. You're going to have them right on your show. Yeah, one day, inshallah. I was like, okay, cool. So you went to the National School of the Arts? You yeah. You drama. Yeah. And then I started working at Tom's Sound and Music, a music store. Good place, store. bro. Very Good cool place. place. Yeah, Tom's is yeah. the best place. So I learned a lot about sound and yeah. studio equipment and stuff yeah. just from working there. Yeah. And because I got a staff discount... <laughs> I managed to buy a lot of studio equipment for like yeah. my home studio at the time yeah. from when I was, I started working there, I was 14 years old. Jeez. So I was working weekends yeah. and I got a staff discount yeah. and I was teaching drums and stuff at that stage yeah. as well. So I was like saving money. What bands did you play for? Now I want to know what bands you played. So the most famous person I played for was Jesse Clegg. Jesse Clegg got some numbers, bro. Yeah, but this was numbers. before he was like as, oh, before as he was big, big as. Yeah. Yeah. This was still at Wits University. But uh, listen, it's still braggable because yeah. Yeah, I, mean. he, I didn't audition for him. His dad saw me play. Nah. So it's like when Johnny Clegg <laughs> sees you play and he's like, listen. <laughs> it's like, listen, my man. Yeah. Like you got chops. Yeah. And I nearly died. You know, when Johnny, Johnny Clegg comes up to you, he's like, yeah. oh man, you got chops. So you're like, <gasps> <Yeah. "What?" laughs> Johnny Clegg is like, he's like, yo, Jesse, my man. You he fucking around here. Fucking around Forget that drama guy. What's his name? I don't know. The kid works at Tom's. Mm. <laughs> I saw him that there on the Tom's. display stand. <laughs> that's, you, you've got a grasp of the story. Like pretty <laughs> much. That's like how it happened. But then um, how did you get into radio? And then because I had all this equipment and built a recording studio, I knew how to do sound. Yeah. And I had a friend that I used to play in bands for where we used to play like, you know, casino bands, like the yeah, two man yeah, bands yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, he worked for a recording studio that did casino radio. Okay. Like they did radio stations yeah. for casinos and stuff. So I went to get a job there when I just finished school. I just finished studying music. I went to go get a job there as a sound engineer. I must say, going to the National School of the Arts as a white person, I mean, that's brave. That is brave. Mm. A lot of, I don't know how many, like... I can't remember like a white parent I, in a long time going like, yeah, I'm going to send my son. Back and yeah, my parents, young, my parents didn't really want to do it. I was in a Catholic private school in Joburg South. Okay. And then I was like, oh, I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. What do you want to do? Drama. Drama. <laughs> Music. Imagine. Percussions. And uh, What's the matric yeah, the exam like there? Did uh, you do maths? GDE, yeah. Did I did, you do I did oh, a you normal. Do I did a normal government, but there's they also have like a college course yeah, yeah. that you don't have to. Because you know, like now you're doing like other things that other like I went to Model C school. And so like you dream as a brown person, we dream of doing like these I would use to call extravagant subjects. Mm. Like um when uh, when it'd be like, ah, oh, you know, that so and so is so and so is doing drama. And then you're like, What? How did he get allowed? Mm. I had to do applied mathematics. Here's Marco going, yo, if you know from a, a drum paper one, drum paper one, I fucking kill that shit, bro. I was like, doof, 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 right. On the yeah, practical. so it was difficult. It was difficult yeah. at first to like convince yeah. your parents, parents especially you, you say white people. It's yeah. like, I think there's a Did lot of white know? people yeah. that allow it, like you're yeah. saying. Did they even like know about it? Like, no. And oh, I think wild. for me, probably more similar yeah. to people of color where yeah. you go tell your parents this, I want to yeah. do music and they're like, what? Yeah. Where did you, you know, find I'm out about National School of the Arts then? If your parents didn't know. I think they knew what, that the school existed. Mm. Um, 
I I just I can't remember how I found out about the school. So I can't I, remember. I, told, I went to Whistle Boys High School, right? But uh, Durban High School, DHS, was like the coolest school. And one day I told my dad, I want to go to DHS. And he's like, why? I was like, I just think the people are cooler there. And my dad said, listen, we fucking worked hard to get you into Whistle Boys. You will go back to school tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. And he's like, you will go to school. I don't care what it is. This is a top school. Go there. I always, th- I always think about it. And I always right. think about my reasoning was, they just seem like cool guys. At DHS. I think we, I had the, I had something similar in primary school where my parents were paying for me to go to a private school. <laughs> and I liked the idea of going to a public, a school. like the public school yeah. that I was yeah. at before yeah. because yeah. I think I had friends there or something yeah. silly, you know, where yeah. you don't realize the opportunity you've been given yeah. to go to a better quality school. So now and the sacrifices they make. From National School of Arts, then into Tom's, then Tom's into Casino Radio at a studio. Yeah. And Ooh. then I then started. Radio Radio. Yeah, well, Radio Radio I only did because I started my own like mall radio business mm. after the casino radio business. Yeah. Which, which mall, I still which mall did you target? I feel the I, way I you said it was Glenn. like, yeah, I went to, I went to Sandon City. I said, yo, I'm going to give you music. I did that and they said no. no. So, but anyway, um, I one of my presenters that I had, he was a 947 presenter. Patrick yeah. was my mate. Um, I started producing for his show at 947 while he was yeah. still there. Yeah. So that's how that that was my stint in normal radio. And then as 947 is mm. with uh let's play some games with people's lives and have a laugh about it. Which which radio station is in these days? I think they're all the same. I, I think, think any and take any name, any number, you probably find the same. I think thing. the SABC is less like that, but it's just a work ethic thing. You're it's right like yeah. we'll try to ruin your life, but we won't try yeah. so hard. Yeah, I haven't. Where's, where's Prime Media? It's like, we will we try, watch us try to ruin your life. It's we'll so do weird. it. It's so weird that you say that because <laughs> the SABC under Claudio Matsuneng, right? Used to have, they used to have all this different various artwork inside the building. And just outside the 5 m studios, there's actually like this piece of art. It's this, uh, you know, when there's a murder scene and they put tape around the body. That was the artwork that's on the floor. <laughs> I just thought, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the worst piece of artwork you can have for like a failing state-owned media company right now. It was, like, it was uh, horrible. Yeah, they used to like meet their quotes on ad revenue by like March and then stop yeah. selling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were horrible. The cool thing though is that they did play 90% of the African music. And, mm, that uh, was a cool thing. Yeah. I thought that was a I good do, initiative. I do fucks with that. Have you ever been downstairs to the smaller radio stations, the one that like transmits to like Louis Trichat and Limpopo? I've not, I've not seen those oh, studios. Oh my gosh, bro. It is another world. Firstly, the SABC have some magnificent like state-of-the-art studios but for a generation like if you go down i think it's like the fourth or fifth floor like underneath there's a state-of-the-art studio radio studio that they made in the 80s mm. they maybe they've used it like five times bro i'm talking about you know how like how you have like all these sure mics mm. whatever the version was in the 80s they got it there sure mics. But they, yeah they don't use it's, it that they haven't changed this mic <laughs> they the, they don't use it they're just like they just leave it there this microphone was invented in the 70s and called an sm7 oh gosh really? then they changed they must have changed something. Then they the changed fresh, bro. these switches. Yeah. These switches. And they made it in like 91 or something. And they Jeez. called it an SM7A. Yeah. And then this one comes with like a different pop filter. And that's why it's called an SM7B. Sure, that's actually, how much this microphone has changed since the 70s. I've never seen someone that actually knows that information. I'm, but I'm pretty impressed to be honest. <laughs> but yeah. There's a whole podcast just about this oh, microphone. God. Oh God! So then mm. you had nine for seven for a little bit. And then so you like just producing for yeah. Patrick. So yeah. I wasn't ever formally yeah, yeah. employed by nine yeah. for seven. I was employed by Patrick, Patrick to produce his show. Yeah. Uh, I don't think management liked that. I think that was the beginning of the end for him. Yeah. That he didn't want to use their pro- he, producers. I think yeah. he had words about one of the producers yeah. who yeah. obviously was in favor there. Yeah, yeah. And then that was the end of him at nine for seven. Great presenter, awesome yeah. voice, just like a natural radio yeah. guy. Great radio guy. Yeah. So when he left there, it was the start of internet radio, probably 2011 or 12. Like, I with think. like just playing Darren, Balls Radio. Balls Radio. So it was the same time Balls Radio started, Two Oceans Vibe Radio. Yeah. We were on a show in the Hadda station, they had a studio in Melrose Arch. Yeah. So the, uh, the owner, who, who was the owner of Two Oceans Vibe Radio at the time? Mr. Two Oceans Vibe. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. He he said to Bailey Schneider at the time. Oh, Bailey Schneider. Yeah. yeah. So she was presenting there yeah, to yeah. Ocean's Vibe. Yeah. 
and then he's like trying to just snap up talent from 947 yeah and he's like where's the white guy who looks like mr t i mean patrick's colored but he's like the white <laughs> the white guy who looks like mr t oh who, that's hilarious. he does look like mr t yeah, he does, he but does. he's not a white guy yeah but anyway he's like where's that guy so then patrick had a meeting with him he's like listen i want to do a radio show with my producer marco yeah so that's where we started the pat and marco show oh, okay. we were the number one internet radio show in south africa yeah. with our 400 listeners but the way you're saying that also is like how many other radio sh- internet radio shows were in south africa because i used to do the well, same thing well there was thing. a good one yeah. there was one very good one just before us it was enf's show oh yeah enf yeah i, remember I think ENF. he had the wrong time slot though i begged enf for a job you know that uh, oh really yeah i sent him my cv and everything i was like yo i desperately i want to get back into great radio guy. and studio never responded mm. so basically if you ever see enf these days fuck you enf i made it without you boy <laughs> i'm kidding i haven't seen him in years yeah. I love, so, I, love, uh, I, so love. I think him and Sasha is why I fell in love with radio in the first place. Mm. The F and Martin Ingo show on 5FM was I never, such I, a good show. Bro, I, Are you I, younger I, than me? You must be. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm older than you. I'm 33. Oh, also. 1988. Yeah, yeah but I, never, I, d- I didn't listen to that type of radio. I didn't listen to 5FM until I got to Joburg like in 2010. Oh, do Durban people not listen to 5FM? No, they do. I listen to East Coast Radio and uh, SAFM. Because I grew up listening Sorry to about that. No, I loved it, bro. It was the only talk radio we had. Sorry about that. Why, bro? I love talk radio. I think talk radio still is the coolest thing ever. Like, I'll, listen, I'll go listen to 702 in my car. I love talk radio. I think talk radio is so brilliant because you think that you have a certain paradigm about things and then you're listening to a show and then someone will phone in and be like, how's it? Bongoni? Nah, brother. I, I don't like aubergines. I don't like eggplants. It's the worst tasting food ever. Then you're like, yo, how could you not like aubergines? What, you don't like baba ganoush? What's wrong with you? I think your issue is that maybe you didn't listen to 5FM at the right time then. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it was was content driven. I I knew a lot of 5FM stuff. Um, Alex J, like when I worked with Alex J, Alex J is the father of 5FM. I know you. (laughs) I know you. I know you. You must be Simiarov. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love Alex J. I think I miss him. Actually, was, uh, I should also interview him. I haven't spoken to him in years. What a legendary broadcaster in South Bro, Africa. Bro, Alex J. Alex you J. know J. why I'm game. not a legendary broadcaster in South Africa? Because I can't pronounce name. broadcaster. Broadcaster. <laughs> no, it's also because you didn't go to, you didn't go Marco M. You see. You wanted to keep Marco mm. Martin. That's your biggest problem. You're ahead of mm. your time. You're using name and surname. Mm-mm. People weren't doing that Mm-mm. only up until like 2008, 2009. Mm. That's your problem. So now you're stuck with Marto, Mar- uh, Marco Mark- uh, Martins. Yeah. And like people are like, yo, I only know Marco M. What if, like if I was born like Ian F with a name like Ian F, it sounds like a radio name. F is not his surname, man. It's not his surname. It's not his surname. His surname. Nah, his surname. surname is like Fred Skite or something like that. It's like it's a, a weird race. name. It's a weird surname. What about Alex Cage? Oh, Alex Stromrond. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have nice words to say about Alex Cage. I don't have nice words. It's, uh, he's one of the few people in this life where I just go like, yo, if you're medium beige and white, you can go far. I don't like, I hate shitting on people and their talents and stuff, but I mean, like, he knows my views. So anyway, but he's a nice guy, I guess. I guess. Yeah. I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? Hey, yo, I think, uh, you know, sometimes people in radio, and this mm. may not apply to him, um, people get far if they know how to do the stuff that works in radio. So, like pressing buttons, I've and heard, driving the desk. I've heard this before from yeah. multiple people about yeah. Alex, but. I mean, I, I mean, don't know he does he, what he does is good. He knows how to do radio. I when you listen to radio, sometimes, and I always say this because I n- hate coming across as like a mm. person that didn't get into radio uh, or get a shot. You know radio. who's a radio guy, mm. and I think it's just to support your discussion yeah. more is Grant Nash. Yeah, Grant Nash understands radio. Mm. He does also, but like there's also like I've I've had uh, meetings, tons of meetings with Grant. There's actually something I saw the other day where someone from Nine for Seven had reposted something. And I was just like, yo, sometimes the, the people in radio stations think backwards. I don't think they, th- they don't look forwards. They don't see like a new model. That's why you see like a lot of radio stations trying to jump onto like a podcasting type of thing. Because, and they're like, oh, we've got the content. You have to actually ask, do you? Because what you're doing is that if you're taking Wackhead's prank or the hour of Bongani in, in the morning on 702 and mm. putting it online, that's not necessarily a podcast. That's just audio archiving, which is the thing in itself but it's not so Especially I'm audio for music first. radio right yeah but like mm. I mean a lot of talk radio do the same thing I think it works for talk radio because it's more in, indicative of the podcast media exactly. but you go like there's <laughs> playing someone's piece of content mm-hmm. on the internet instead of live really isn't um 
a thing, you know. It's like it's it's just audio archiving. There's nothing new or neutral about it, or or, um, or podcast first about it. It's always radio first, podcast second. Whereas I come from a world of I'm podcast first. Yeah, and I think it's they have to somehow keep advertisers happy and listen to their consultants from overseas who are telling them where the trends are going and stuff like that. And yeah, but try it's, to, it's like, two Australian guys. It's two Australian who, guys who, are, who consult against, who for Virgin in Dubai yeah. Yeah, 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 and yeah. an Australian with radio Chris station. Fied. Virgin Radio in Virgin Dubai Radio. with Chris Fide so, and Pretty Malik and Big Rossi. I think the big problem with that is that they're looking at trends in countries that are still new to the idea mm. of all these changes so they're consulting them. and you know but that being said but though, they made a big mistake as well so that same consultant is yeah. why radio don't have big voices anymore yeah. they were like yeah. people aren't listening to radio anymore because they're unrelatable your presenters yeah. are too unrelatable yeah. people want to talk to their friends yeah. yes that's why they have fucking Facebook <laughs> keep what <laughs> you've got funny. going for you that's funny I don't know I was like so I because I haven't been in the world of radio for so long I don't really care. I listen to radio mm. now purely for enjoy, uh, p- purely for enjoyment. I don't, uh, I don't think about the talent that's on. Sometimes when it comes to March and April, when people are leaving radio stations, I like playing the game where I guess where a person is going because you know so the South African entertainment scene and radio is part of it. Just regurgitations, the same people, different radio station all the time. You know, I always say South Africa, the land of second chances. Mm. There, you always have a second chance. So I don't, I don't really care as much as I used to. But I mean, at the same time, good for them. Make your money, boo boo. Mm. Well, who who am I? I'm here at Vodcast TV. Mm. Yeah, I've got Africa's eighth best podcast. Other than that, I'm not nobody. But it's not Africa's eighth best podcast. So, yeah, it's like every. Uh, well, firstly, I'm changing the slogan now to Editors Pick 2021 Podcast. Oh, yeah. big. Yeah, yeah no, I've got uh, we our podcast company. Congratulations! Has Thanks, bro. We've got uh, two podcasts in that thing. In the you and Biosquare Brother. Yeah, Biosquare Brother. Yeah, very cool guys. Uh, we've got two podcasts in that, which is great because I mean, like. It shows that it's the reflection of the amount of work you put in. Mm. And as an independent podcaster, someone that didn't have the capacity to use your studio um, up until a few months ago, you know, Mm. I mean, maybe people should know the first time I ever emailed Marco, I said, yo, can you give me 10 hours? And Marco quoted me 14,000 Rand. I remember my agent went, tell this guy we're not going to use it. I'm like, I don't want to tell him. He's like, no, I'll tell him if you don't. I was like, no, 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 don't tell him. Don't tell him. I'll tell him. I'll tell him. I'll tell him. Never told him. Then I spoke to you like... A year later, when I came here to interview, interview Durazan Izuma, and then afterwards, when I came back from Dubai, then you're like, yo, let's work together. And that's the thing I dig about you. A lot of people don't, um, they, they don't share resources. Mm. They don't open and say, come, use this thing. I've made it for you. Like, this studio is made for POC podcasts. It's, I mean, you didn't paint the, the stuff and the colors and stuff, but you're just like, yo, here's a microphone. Here's someone that's going to look at the audio and stuff. And that's the type of I dig people like that because mm. it means we're on the same wavelength. To Andy. You're not you don't hustle me down for like, yeah, well, you know, this is a business transaction. I'm like, yeah, there's business behind it. But literally, I enjoy having conversations with you about podcasting because you understand the medium already. I don't have to explain mm. anything. I'll be like, yo, what are you listening to today? You'll be like, oh, I'm listening to this. And I'll be like, I'm going to go listen to myself. And you don't find those people often. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry and that, it's, I'm, it's a I'm, big sorry that I'm not hilarious, but I'm just like I'm just telling people. No, how, it's fine. How I mean, it's nice to get person. it's nice to get compliments yeah. on podcasting from Puppy Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Puppy Podcast. Puppy Podcast. <laughs> See Hierro, Taco Bell. That's the first piece of like uh, Spanish or Mexican Latino. I think I don't know what it's called that I ever heard was when I went to America, and that was the advert that came on the television. Sihiero Taco Bell. I don't know what it means. Mm. Or maybe it was even Wihiero. No, I think it's Sihiero. I don't know. I'm not a... I, I don't speak Spanish. So, oh, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah. So what's the glasses thing? People know some of these glasses. I actually used to have other glasses. I've got astigmatism, which basically means if I take these bad boys off, people you are fatter. You don't see much. No, people are fatter. Oh, right. Yeah, people are so wider. And also, like, the lights So, do you stuff. take them off when you run behind girls? Because now you're a runner. Yeah, I mean, of course I have to run. But, I mean, like, if you see lights like these over here, they actually look like uh, X's to me. Oh, right. Like, like I this. have that when yeah. I drive at night. Yeah, well, then you've got right. astigmatism. You should check right. that out. Mm-hmm. So, that's what I have it for. Uh, that's why I have the glasses. But, I mean, like, I don't... I've lost so many pairs, bro. Mm. I'm so bad at keeping these things because inevitably contacts like, suck as well right yeah contacts suck ass 
So like inevitably I'll take it off and I'll put it down on the table and mm. I'll leave. Like I did, I've done that in Cape Town like three times. That's why if I ever see somebody wearing my Tom Fords in Cape Town, I, I, I know they're mine. Firstly, they're a very special frame. I didn't get them overseas. I got them over here, mm. but I got them at this, uh, opt- there's a place that sells uh, spectacle frames in Jeppy uh, in town, right? But they sell them only to optometrists. So oh, you have boss. to go there. You have to go there and act like you're an optometrist so you can get like the massive discount. So like Tom Ford, you know, it's like eight. If you didn't know Sumi so. was Arab, now you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go like Tom Ford at a normal store, it's like 8,000 Rand, right? Mm-hmm. You go there, it's like 1,700. Mm-hmm. But you have to be an optometrist. So there's a person that works there. She used to be a big fan of a show I used to do on MTV called You Got Got. It was a silly mm-hmm. prank show. And then she DM'd me one day saying, yo, I do frames and stuff for glasses. Come through. I have to act like I'm a... We're like, oh, these are nice. Oh, these Ray-Bans are really good. I'm sure a lot of clients would like well, this. Yeah. It's like patience. There's a lot of patients would like <laughs> this. <laughs> and then like I saw these Tom Fords. Mm. And she's like, no one buys these things. at the bottom. Maybe like five in the country. They're not because they rare. It's because they like shit. It. Yeah, mm. people. Are, I loved it though. It was much similar to this. I just didn't have like one of the second gold frame, and I bought it and I lost it in Cape Town. And I swear to God, I'm I'm not even joking when I say this, bro. People people who know me know this threat. If I'm walking in Cape Town and, and I see, I see someone wearing the, those frames, I'm gonna fuck them up. I'm mm. gonna punch them. I'm gonna take my glasses back, and they'll be like, "How do you know it's yours?" I was the only person. Not right. and I didn't see a single person with those flame frames. Are you gonna punch them and then take the glasses? You know, take glasses take first, glasses, punch. punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I think because that'll be counterintuitive. You need you know? it. Yeah, 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 you need to yeah. think. No, I understand. Or is it one of those like, if I can't have them, no one can? Maybe it is. I don't know. But those were my Let's favorite see. pairs, bro. I, mm. I miss that pair so much. I like. I want to get into. Um, I want to get bigger. And glasses now. are a vibe now, right? Yeah, yeah. Everybody has them. Mm. But like, you know, some. <laughs> so there's this Arab guy who's my friend. His name is Double. Uh, he hangs out at the coffee shop that I, uh, that I generally hang out at. Loof Coffee. Uh, Loof Coffee. Uh, great, excellent coffee. And what he does is that he um, he works at the shisha joint around the corner. And he'll come to me, brother, can I please borrow your glasses? But it's like it's like a fit to you. And I also, why do you want to borrow my glasses? Like, no, for the, the woman, they like uh, men with uh, intellectual looking. Then you say, fine, just take these things. He looks like an idiot. Imagine a UFC fighter uh, <laughs> with, with like, glasses. glasses on. You're just like, what is... Choose, choose a vibe and stick where's with it. From? Bro. Where's, where's he's the... from? He's originally from Syria. Oh. Yeah, he does UFC fighting. Um, he's oh. very bad at it, though. Um, and I always thought you he would be good. MMA, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah MMA, yeah. MMA, MMA, yeah. I always thought he would be good because I'm like, he comes from Syria. Yeah. Right? But then I realized he's not from the hood in Syria. He's, he's from like the burbs. So he's like, he's like, yeah. Well, then on the weekend we go to the beach. That's I'm something like, we don't think of if you don't, yeah. if you've never been to Syria, is you don't yeah, think yeah. about the suburbs of Syria. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but I mean, like he's so he's from originally from Damascus. Uh, Damascus is actually one of the oldest cities in the world. You know, they've got a windmill over there that is like mm. it still works as day. It's made out of uh, solid wood that's been like in existence, I think, for over like two thousand years. That's maybe. wild. It's like it's, it's massive. Like I, I dig, I dig small little history bits like that. That's mm-hmm. a, that's my that's my thing in life, is finding small little tidbits and accessing that information. I like it as well. Yeah, well. it's it's uh, hilarious when everyone thinks of Saddam Hussein. Yeah, and and you only think of like all these American stories, Saddam yeah, Hussein yeah. from Iraq, and it's like, yeah. oh, what a horrible place yeah, he was yeah. in. Whatever. It's like, yeah. meanwhile, the guy's mansion yeah, yeah. was look overlooking yeah, yeah. the birth of yeah. modern society. society yeah. Which was um, well, like I so I went to Iraq, Babylon, L- right? lovely. Uh, n- n- I can't actually remember where it faced over. Yeah, it was Babylon, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, he, um, uh, not he. The amount of museums and history and stuff is amazing. I also had the worst taxi driver there, who was adamant that his hair would grow back if he ate rice every single day. I was like, how long have you been doing this rice thing for? He's like twelve years. I'm like, yo, my man, it's not coming back. Your hair's gone, dude. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yo, no amount of basmati is, is giving you a quiff, my man. It's, it's not going to work like that. It's not so. going to happen. But I like another enjoyable place. So I, I dig doing that. You know, when we when I went to Japan, right? Um, just Sumi has a culture. great Japan story, by the way. Yeah, yeah, uh, subscribe to Lesser Known Somebodies. Yeah, no, it's, it's on uh, Lolo K with me Lolo and Wadeen. Yeah, yeah, me and right. Wadeen Lucas. It's a great Japan story. It's great a Japan story. It's a fundamental Japan story. Uh, we'll link it. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll put it at the bottom. But um, like Japan has a ton amount of history and stuff. And like that's, I dig. I always, if I could go back in time, and I go to university again, because I've got a I've got a law degree. Hmm. You know, it's useless to me because I don't use it. But if I could go back in time, I would study history, because just you always see the same patterns around the world all the time, d- just with different characters, 
which is nice. And that's actually the trick to comedy is to notice a pattern and then show the people the pattern that you've noticed and always do the analogies and compare people to things that have happened before. It's a little trick over there. It's a little Rubik's Cube secret. Tell us about writing jokes. I'm bad. I'm bad at writing. I'm I'm great at telling. Mm. I'm excellent at telling. In fact, if I had to, I did a television show one of these days, um, the Dan Nichols show, and Dan asked me mm. a question saying, um, "Do you feel funnier?" I said, "I've never been funnier than I am right now. Not in this moment of the show in the context. I'm just like just now as a person, like right now. Like I feel it's very, it's very difficult for me to not be funny." Mm. If I put my mind to it, I'm just like, yo, if I'm in comedy mode, I'm going to knock gags. I'll knock gags one way. Like right now, I'm not in comedy mode. I'm chilling mm. with my friend talking about just an array of topics. But like, so I'm not switched on. But I just like everything, like if, you, if it is a topic and I have enough time to think about it, I can work out a set. I can work out a gag. I can work like, so like now running is my thing. And I took, I took about like the thing that upsets me the most about this running thing is that the group's name is guns and roses right mm. but not runs and goeses which is the better running group name it is right there who came up with guns and roses the guy uh uncle bocky he came up with it uh, and he's cool because it's uh he digs music and there's a lot of women in the group so they are the roses and the men are the guns and stuff but you could see when i said you know like so you you're, you're running with him and yeah, you're like, and like why is it you know you know what this group should be called Runs and goes, as you know, it was like you're running and you're going and you could see people like, okay, wait, yeah, wait, that's a good we name. To, we need to work this out. We need to work this <laughs> yeah. out because there's a funnier way to tell the story. <laughs> of course. It's a funny way. Okay. So, so you're running, yeah. you're running next to, um, yeah, uh, Uncle Bucky. But he, Uncle Bucky. So I'll, no, I'll tell you how it happened. So we're having coffee at this place. Incredibly shit coffee. You know, I only get my coffee from one place, Louvre. And I said, what's the name of the running group? And someone said, Guns and Roses. I said, okay, why is it not called Runs and Goeses? Because I mean, that's... Okay, so the- but you're not sitting having coffee. Now you're running and discussing it. But, yeah, like, but you're the only person wanting to talk while you're running. No, no, no. I, ha- I Also, I hate people that do that as well. I don't like talking when I'm running, but I'm just like, this is where... I'm telling you how the, the exact situation happened. Okay, and then, and we'll then make I it said, why is it not called Runs and Goeses? And you could see on their face where they're... You know when people are like oh, that's good, but I don't uh-huh. admit that it's mm. good. Then it's just like, yeah, I guess it's a cool name. It's like, hey, my man, that's a brilliant fucking name, dog. That's a, like, what the fuck? So now my new thing is that I got these running shoes. Mm. Hey, my man. Hey, now I'm a proper runner. I'm shaving time off my minutes over there. People are taking me seriously because there's certain running shoes people will take you seriously with. Brooks. Even when I went I to go get know what the, that is. you see, you're not a good not a runner. runner. You're not a runner, bro. Mm. You don't understand. When I went to go get my shoe sorted, right? I went to the shaman, this mystic man at uh, uh, Randberg Runners, Afrikaans dude. And he's just like, yo, I can tell by your foot over there. You've got plascar fasciitis. And I was like, yes, yeah, so I've got plascar and fettuccine, bro. I know these yeah, things. Yeah. Like, yeah, of course I've got that thing. He said, I've only got one shoe for you. Just like Harry Potter when they choose wands. Yeah, uh, <laughs> is he that yeah, guy? Yeah, yeah, he's that guy. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, you go to a place that got no shoes on the wall. They just mm. got boxes. Like, yeah. And then you tried it on yeah, and like yeah. one made you do a backflip and land no, on your bro, neck. He he's like, oh, maybe those bro. ones aren't right. No, he, you don't try on a second pair there. That he guy just gets it right. He gets it right. Bro, I thought he was, give, he was scamming me. He wasn't. He took me outside. He said, just jog there and jog back. Now, you know, in my head, like I said, as a South African, always thinking crime. Yeah. I was like, what if I just continue jog? To jog. <laughs> what, if I, what are you going to do now? But then I realized he probably could run faster than me because mm. he works at a He'll himself. catch you. Yeah, yeah. So then I jogged down, jogged back up and didn't feel any Is pain it about or faster or for longer than you? Like you can run, but he'll run longer. I think he'll do both. Because mm. the way he set it up, it was like, I've been running for 38 years already. I was like, jeez, oh, I'm not even, I'm not even 38. Bro. Mm. You've been running before my time. Mm. And then he's like, these shoes. I was like, yeah, but you know, there's a, there's a brand called Hoka. And like they do this like guy was a pro runner when you were busy telling yeah, yeah, yeah. people about like your new shoes and oh like, yeah can easy. you run faster yeah. than them and you're easy. like i'll show you easy so there's a brand called mm. hoko and they all the, all the shoes look cool they're like mm. bright and vibrant like i'd i'd fucking wear it normally I was like but i was really hoping to get a hoka it's like there's no hoka shoe for you those shoes are for hipsters i'm like i'm a hipster he's mm. like no you're not you're, a, you're runner. a runner now i was like okay he's like i was like do people know this brand he's like firstly you know what's good about this brand? I was like, what? Is that it doesn't come with flashiness. People know a Brooks from a mile away, but anybody that's serious about running knows Brooks. I was like, okay, cool. Let me test it out. I was running today, running past a few people. 
And I was like, oh, these guys are too new. They don't know. They wouldn't miss the prize shoes, you know, mm. just running, running, running. I get to, I get to um, one of the one of the guys that is in the running group. He's been there for ages. And I say, hey, do you know about Brooks? He's like, yeah, Brooks are for serious runners. And I was like, yes. I'm, I'm a serious runner now. Serious runner. I was like, check these, check these bad boys out, bro. And like, it was like, yo, are those Brooks? I'm like, yes, they are. They are Brooks. I was so stoked with it, bro. I was really, really happy with it. So like, I'm a big runner now. I enjoy it. I love how all of these little niche groups have their little nerd clubs. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, damn, you got the 89,000. Bro, like, you're joking, whatever. bro. Someone uh, said, I can't believe Adil has those Vapor 5s, Nike, Nike something, what was. I was like, there's lots going on over here for me to explore. Firstly, who's Adil? Why do we? Why are we going, we can't believe he has these things. Like, it's a 5,000 rand shoe. I was like, so? That's just money. It's like, he doesn't earn enough. Uh, I was like, oh, okay. Well, you guys are just jealous at Adil's shoes over here. It's like um, guys in the UK with football. Yeah, 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 it's like the most expensive football ticket on yeah, the planet yeah, is to yeah. get a season ticket for the game, purchased almost exclusively by shipbuilders. Like it's ridiculous. <laughs> like these guys make no money, yeah. and then they they spend everything on tickets to the football. Mm, I don't know if I can do. That. I don't know if I can spend everything. I, I know that I know what I would spend money on mm. cricket. Um, as a sport, I think that's the only thing I would spend money on. But there's very few places in the country that will actually make me pay for a ticket here in South Africa. Uh, to like go watch the cricket. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time, uh, uh, I thought you were talking I know about players. your your great nickels. Nah, nah, nah. How nah, many? Nah, nah. I haven't I haven't played cricket in years, in absolute years. My biggest thing is that I do I did take the wicket of Christopher Morris at a charity game. That's impressive. Yeah, yeah. It was I, after I had been smacked for four, six, six, six. I mean, I think I think they joked it was Nelson Mandela score. It was four, six, six, four. Uh, that was already <laughs> the five balls was over, and I walked up to him. And I was just like, yo, man, please listen, I've got a family yeah. at home and I can't be smacked for another I boundary. Don't, I don't have my own house, man. <laughs> yeah, I said, don't know. Like it's one thing for my family to disown me, but bro, disown yeah. and homeless is, is, it's, it's horrible. It's, it's horrible. horrible. It's horrible. And he said, okay, bowl is short. And I was like, yeah, but I must bowl it fast or slow. He's like, you only bowl it slow. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, okay, cool. Uh, and then, and then you retired. He literally battered like, with the bat facing in front of me and waited for the ball and just knocked it in the air. And I was like, yo, if you drop this catch, bro, if you drop. So I made sure it hit my chest and I fell down with it. And I was like, yes, I took, I took a wicket of a pro tier. It was, it was cool. Guy. And that game was actually called, uh, called off. Aiden Markram um, smashed a ball into, there's a, there's a place called the Dimension. Did you Data email, Oval. did you email um, Reach for a Dream before this? No, no, no. Because it sounds like no, a, it, it sounds it like a part of a Reach yeah, for a Dream it story. Is, it, it is, it does sound like a Reach for a Dream because for me it's like <gasps> crickets, you know. Yeah. So like um, Aiden Markham hit a ball into one of the offices and it actually hit um, one of the coffee machines, right? And coffee machines, you know, the ones with the pots and the, the heated p- uh, uh, plate, right? No. When turned over, oh, started a fire, and I just remember, no. yeah, I just remember I was on the, uh, we saw the fire pluming, like just like a normal filter coffee, yeah, 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 yeah. right. And I remember seeing like the black smoke come from that office, and I remember just saying, "Ah, oh, look, protea fire," and everybody thought it was hilarious. I'm like, yeah, 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 that's that's me, guys, that's me, that's my gag over there. Glad I made all you guys laugh, you motherfuckers. I'm out. Yeah, I've yeah. retired now yeah, from cricket. That's one of my. That's one of my best wins. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, of course, so I've, yeah, and I've watched cricket around the world, but because I know some of the players, they always hook me up with tickets. So that's why I haven't played. It in sounds ages. like one of those kids with leukemia stories. Ah, <laughs> <that, like, laughs> heavy. I dunked on Jordan, bro. I yeah. dunked on yeah, Jordan. Yeah, 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 yeah. You did. Yeah, 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 you yeah. did, you, Tommy. You did, boy. You did. Yeah, it does sound Tom, like Tommy that. junked on yeah, Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Jordan. Mm. I, was, I was telling one of my friends, because uh, sorry to bring it back to running, because that's my new thing now. Mm. Um, the only thing I don't like about running is the amount of five kilometers for cancer I have to run in a year. I mean, it's just too many of them. I was like, I don't know. I mean, I know cancer is a bad ailment and disease, but I can't do the 35 kilometers every Saturday. Shall we make us a Marco Martin's Revolution podcast now? <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, now you've yeah, set sorry, me up. Sorry, now sorry, you've yes, set me up for us to yes, go back to like yes, what the previous yes, episodes are like. Go for it. What I don't like about cancer charity stuff oh, shit. is oh, where are you gonna like, slam on I'm a, not going to slam on. Yeah. I'm going to slam on cancer charities, okay, not on cancer yeah, yeah. and people with cancer and their it, families. Bro, I'm ready, yeah. Is that all the funding goes to the same places and the same research? It all goes oh, to shit. funding the least successful medical treatment in modern medicine, and that's oh, chemotherapy. They keep researching chemotherapy. It's statistically the least successful modern medicine. Oh, should you've done your research history. on this thing, bro? In history, it is completely. Whoa, also, 
from what I understand, mm. I may be wrong on this, mm. but from what I understand, it's also the only drug in the United States that doctors who prescribe it can receive a financial remuneration in uh, commissions. What? The only drug in the United States where it's legal for them to get paid to prescribe the drug, and that's chemotherapy, the least successful treatment in the history of modern medicine. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Yeah. I don't know any of that. It's the most financially successful treatment in modern medicine. Yeah, I history. just want to run. I just want to yeah. run a 5K every single time. Yeah. That's why I'm like, I'm very worried about it. And then we send money to people to research chemotherapy so that they can keep treating people mm. with it. There you go. Okay. Welcome to a Marco Martin's rant. <laughs> I, I, can see, I, I can just see Marco Martin's I'll rant. Where he's just like, yo, fuck, ca- fuck cancer charities. <laughs> I actually, that, I think that's going to be how I'm going to start ending the podcast. Oh. I'm actually going to run some podcast <laughs> ideas past you. Let's do this. Let's do a podcast <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, like when you end the podcast, you're like, yeah, yeah. you're like, if you've never listened to a full lesson on somebody's podcast because you don't have a hundred rand to pay yeah. for the podcast yeah. every month. I do have five free ones. So you can just do the five free ones. Five free ones. ones. Yeah. At the end of every podcast, Simi asks his guest yeah, to ask him a question. Yeah. So I've interviewed you. It's yeah. been lovely. Thank you so much. No now, I like to finish this <laughs> off with you asking me a question. Should I do it a little bit more like Samira? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can try. try. I want to see. No, I don't know. I can't. Okay. Anyway. You want me to ask you a question? No, no, no. I'm saying that's how you finish your podcast. So I really love the idea of having a segment, right? Which is what you're doing there is like there's this consistency that every podcast your listeners get to come to the same thing at the end. There's a few American podcasts and stuff that have like a quirky little way to finish it. My one is that I want all of my guests to say fuck something at the end of a podcast. Okay, okay. I mean, that's not bad. Yeah, Um, so it's like just look into that camera and say fuck something. Which one? The side that one. camera over there. I have to think of the thing I'm going to swear today. Because, mm. you know, I, as a person that complains it's weird, a lot. Eh? As a person that, compl- like, I complain about almost everything. So oh, wanna, wait, I know exactly. I want to get I want to get a really, <coughs> really timid girl yeah. in and make her feel really uncomfortable. And then she'll have to be like, fuck cancer. <laughs> well, so that it's still sweet, right? Uh, yeah. And then mm. you'd be like, yeah. Oh, and she must hold the kitten at the same time. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've, there's only something I've been thinking about recently. Is, um, mm. Yeah, I'm looking at your camera. Fuck mm. wallets. Wallets, bro. Fuck wallets. I hate them. Like, Dude. One of my biggest pet fuck peeves. Fuck wallets. Bro. My biggest pet peeves. Like, I know it's empty, and that's one of the biggest problems. I can't put my wallet on my in on my back pocket in my back pockets anymore. It hurts me too much. It hurts me too much. It makes skinny jeans look ridiculous as well. They do, but I'm saying not that skinny jeans don't already just look ridiculous, ridiculous on their own. But I'm saying, like, this thing doesn't have money in it, and it hurts me. But if I take it out and put it on the table, and now it becomes bait for someone to steal it. Wallets are horrible. They're a thing of the past. What do I do then? Uh, I can't only just carry around man my bag. cards. I've got a man bag. That's but you don't need problem. cards. That's another problem with a man bag. Apple Pay. Yeah. What the fuck I, you want cards for? Let me for? tell you something. Bro, you see, this is the difference between white people and brown people. You think I'm going to put my card details on my phone? Are you mad, my man? My man, they've already got it. Do you have a banking app? My, you, you think I got a bank? Are you mad? You don't they have a banking app. They make banks for me to go inside the bank. Ask anybody. My man, you Ask don't like anybody. time. I love time. I, you know why I like the bank? I go over there, take my number, I sit down, I say, Mr. Arif. I say, come, I say, mm-hmm. I say, how are you doing today, sir? No app is ever going to do that for me. Ever. I think I think every app asks you how you're doing today. No. Every single one. How you doing? How do you know? You don't have the app. I know technology. They don't, <laughs> they don't care. You know what I'm trying to get? You know I'm trying to get? Because I'm a runner now. Banking. I'm, to get, <laughs> I'm a runner. I'm trying do you have get, a runner app? I do Strava. But I'm trying to get the Apple Watch from Discovery now. Because uh, if you reach your goals, it's for free every month. You don't have to pay. Pay. That's how you pay. You don't have cards. Oh, calm down. Do you, I had to download this Discovery app, right? Uh, oh my gosh. I cannot the details. find this. I cannot find the opp- opportunity to get this watch. I gave up. I don't mm. need it. I don't need it. It's so difficult to get this thing. I don't want it. I don't want to get a Fitbit. Well. There's What's another Fitbit? app called takealot.com. Ah, another app I don't like. Another app I don't like. Makes me spend money. Another app I don't like, mainly because some of those prices are a bit dodgy over there. I'm like, oh, what Christmas tree costs 998 rand? Well, that's cheap. Is that cheap? Is no, it a lot? It's expensive. Uh, depends it's expensive. on the Christmas tree. You know, someone came up with an app where they can tell you how much discount you're getting for Take a Lot's um, Black Friday and Blue Dot Sale. Very clever. You know, sometimes they, they push their... The I'll tell you exactly what every up. price of everything is on a Black Friday. What? Find the retail price two weeks ago. <clears throat> oh, that's that funny. is now your Black Friday price. Yeah. Yeah. It was four ninety nine. Yeah. Oh, now it's seven ninety nine. But today only, four ninety nine. Do you know, do you know, do you know that old school game trick? 
the trick for game. Fuck Black Friday. Oh shit. Um, <laughs> love yeah, you Black Friday for- in the game. The <laughs> love game. you Black Friday. Yeah, yeah, love you Black Friday. <laughs> um, just because the way you said black, I was just like, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. oh. I love you Black Friday. Okay. Um, so there's um, at game. Let me tell you, there's an old school Muslim trick here, my man. Mm. At Let's game. Yeah, for game. Listen to your boy here, right? Mm. Let's say you Price go. Badge. Yeah, yeah. Let's say you go to. Um, you go to a store and you want to get a TV and that TV is being sold for 5,000 Rand. Then you go to game and that TV is being sold for 6,500 Rand, right? Then you go to game and say, hey, look, this other store, here's the photo, here's the, the price. This is 5,000 Rand. Mm. Game give it to you. They take off, they go to 5,000 Rand and then they take the, I think 10% of the, of the difference off. So it's like, it says so 1,500 difference, they take 10%. Okay, it's 150 bucks. Mm. But now you've got that TV for... Um, 150 rand cheaper than incredible yeah, connection at 4,850 rand. And if you go deal. there and you vaxxed minus another 10%, 4,800. Vaxxed? Yeah, if you vax, if you got vaccinated, my man, 10% off. So now you go 4,850. Oh, Game are doing more for hey, they're COVID doing, than hey, they're fucking lot, government, bro. bro. They are doing a lot, my man. <laughs> I'm there. Game on a Wednesday, I'm there. I'm there. I've got my, here's my vaccination certificate. What, what, which vaccine you want? Have you seen I've this, this uh, unvaxxed sperm Bitcoin Association no, thing that's tell going around. Tell me more, Marco. I, where, where do you find a story like this, boss? My man, they're saying that uh, the, the anti-vaxxers are, yeah. are claiming that unvaxxed sperm, yeah. because apparently the vaccine's going to yeah. cause Destroy an inability yeah. to reproduce. Yeah. I love your reaction. That it will be more valuable than Bitcoin. Unvaxxed sperm will become like the new okay. the new oil, there's the new plenty, mineral. There's plenty of tissues at my house. <laughs> Go search. Go search my room. Yeah, you must refrigerate, search. bro. Oh, you have to But you vexed now. You're done. Yeah, I'm vexed. You're done. You lost it all. Uh, you threw it all I'm away. Okay. Someone the other day asked me, oh, what do you think about the vaccine mandate? And I was like, I hope it happens. This is why I want it to happen, bro. Tell me. Do you know if I book a theater now, right? Let's say Joburg Theater on the Square, uh-huh. 180 seater. I can only fill it up to 90, uh, 90 seats, 50% capacity, which means the ticket price goes goes to like 250 rand a ticket, mm. which is a Tough ticket to sell. Which it was 125. Yeah, I, no, my, my ticket price is only about 100 Rand. Because mm. I've always got a rule in life like, yo, I'll never make a ticket price expensive. People can come and they'll get the value for, for their mm. money. Mm. So then I start going, okay, cool. I can't afford the theater because the theater's price doesn't change for the week. They don't drop their stuff by 50%. The theater doesn't go from 36,000 Rand now to 18,000 Rand. They continue with the same price. So I'm just like, oh, I want a vaccine mandate so people be like, yo, you can fill the theater up. I want people to come. I want to do my job again. Mm. I dig storytelling. I've got so many great stories to tell now as well. I was like, I don't do them to 90 people at an exorbitant price. So I don't like vaccine mandates. Um, because you're white. That's the main reason why. Probably. Yeah, you see, no, so in I life, just always think, ask yourself those things. So I think even though I'm pro-vaccine and I'm yeah. vaccinated and I think everyone yeah. who can get vaccinated should unless yeah. you've just gotten over the virus yeah. and then you've got antibodies anyway why go yeah. get vaccinated it's not going to do anything for you let me t- but let me tell you something i i think we're getting into a let dangerous me, little space letting government worry. tell you what to fucking do i'm fine with it mm. let me let me put it like this we don't care give it give it to us me i can't wait I can't wait for vaccine man. I get you. I mean, I'm there for it. I've supported. I'm there on the. I'll be in the ticketing line. I think Me, I'm a, there. You're in a dangerous space where you start being like, okay, government says that you can't work unless you do this. Okay. Yo, but that's man. how private entities work. Have okay, you been to China? Can you drink and drive? I get you. No, can you drink and drive? No, you cannot. Yes, you can. You can drink and drive. Is it illegal to drink and drive? Yes. Yeah. There we go. I get you. So I'm, now I'm you want that. you can't. You can't have the, you know those are the rules of the road. You can't drink and drive. What I'm saying is when you're coming up with new mandates good times. based on unspecific signs. Marco, it's only good times ahead of us, my friend. Accept the mandate. Mm, be the like man it. in I mandate. Like it. There's so I many don't like things. it. I'd, I'd be fine if I mandated vaccines because I'm vaccinated, right? On a my personal man. level. I just don't. Hey, I just thought of a like banging it. question for you. Tell me. Yeah, but it's got nothing to do with this. Is this though. the end of the podcast? No, 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 no. I've got a banging question for you. Tell me. How come I've never checked you with a girl, like, say? You never see me with a girl. Like a girlfriend. Because uh, when we like met... Like, I know you're straight. I know you're straight. That when, I know. When, we met, when we met, girl. I had a girlfriend. I was living with her. And then what we happened? broke up just over a year ago. It was because of me. I'm it's sorry, of you. bro. Hey. From your email. No wonder you sent me such a mad so what, quote. So what happened you was... You were so upset. <laughs> you would be like, yo, fuck this guy. Yeah. I'm going to knock him for money now. 
I was like, when we first spoke, yeah, when we first spoke, we were on a Zoom call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're on a Zoom call with your bra yeah, in the Osman. UAE. Simi knows people, guys. Yeah, Osman, Osman. Osman, mm. Osman. Osman, Osman is the main guy. Main my, guy. My guys are chic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, main guy, yeah. we're having a meeting. Yeah. Everything's cool. Yeah. And Simi's like, send me a quote. I send a quote. You know, never, never, hear, never hear from Simi again. Yeah, hey, the quote knocked me six ways to Sunday, my man. I was so excited about that meeting. I got off that meeting. I'm like, this is exactly the sort of person and I want to work with. with you. You're lying. You're I'm telling you. I'm telling you the story. Bro, Don't lying. interrupt my story. Yeah, okay, I'm, sorry, I'm telling I'm you sorry, the story. I'm sorry, but I know a lie. I smell one. <laughs> my heart is broken, okay, I'm sorry, to me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And here you are making I'm sorry, jokes. I'm sorry. 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 Fucking comedians. Okay, okay, Never sorry, again. Sorry, sir. Go for it. So anyway. I get off this meeting. I'm amped. I'm excited. I'm like, this is exactly the sort of client I've been wanting for Vodcast TV. I just see it. I just see it. Pock Pod, so cool, man. Cool idea. This guy knows podcasting. I'm excited. And she's like, cool, babe. I'm excited for you too. I'm excited for you too. Send a quote. Okay, I'll send a quote. But be nice on the quote. And I was. I don't know if you were nice, bro. You weren't charging nice. pandemic prices. You were, you were charging pre-pandemic prices. Bro, put, uh, Marco quoted me, I'll tell you, for 10, for 10 hours, 14,000 rand. Which in hindsight, in hindsight, if you divide it by 10, 1,400 rand for a podcast with video is an, a bargain. Yeah. Right? That moment in time, my Just company had zero money. So even if you had quoted me 2,000, or maybe 2,000 rand, I would have. I would have. I was looking for like a 50-50 uh, rev share type of thing, mm. but it didn't happen. So then I saw that quote and then I was just like, nah. <laughs> nah so no then worry. a week after I send this quote. Yeah, send another I'm one. Sitting around. <laughs> I'm sitting around, sitting around, sitting around the house, man. It's yeah. Pandemic. Yeah, pandemic. Got nothing to do. Yeah. Man, that door opens. My ex mm. walks in there. She's like, are you sitting around the fucking house again? No, you're Doing blaming nothing. me. Like, <laughs> wait, listen, listen to my story. Mm. I'm like, you know, I've been trying. I sent that quote last week. You know, that quote, it pays our bond, babe. Yeah. It pays our bond. She's like, yeah, so then fucking email him. I'm like, it's not how business works. You can't just go bug people when they haven't replied to your quote. Like, just yeah. give it another week. Yeah. She's like, I'll give you another week in another house. Bang, out, bro. Straight that day. Kicked out. Because of me. Kicked out. I because lost my me. cats. You lost your cats? I because lost my of cats. Me. I haven't seen those cats because in over me. a year. Let me tell you something. You're better off. You're better off. Look how look how nice and bright your face is. Look how happy you are. I'm back in your life. Look how things have changed. Fuck this man. Can't even be guilted. <laughs> nah, can't even be guilted. Wrong guy, my man. <laughs> wrong guy. What if a duck's back for me? I'm mean, like, okay, cool. But that's not why. But that's also why you don't see me with a girl. <laughs> but that's not why we broke up, Sumi. Okay. I promise you. I don't think so. Maybe. I'll see you in the WhatsApp so? and I'll see. No, no, no. I'll no, see no, if no, it's no, about no, that no, quote. No, 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 don't even go backwards. Change is the only uh, constant Check it. thing. Now you are actually skating. Oh, like, I'm, not, I'm just like, now. Just now it like, is because of that quote. It is because of that guy. Sammy. No, man. There's something wrong with her. She don't even know how business works then. What's wrong with her? You, you better off. You better off. I'll show you other women. Don't worry. Come to my running group. <laughs> Come to my running group. I'll show you things there. I ran slow. Me too. I'm not for... I don't want to come across as a misogynist. So, I, I, so everybody, I run slow. What are my other podcast ideas? I wanted to share podcast yeah, ideas. Give me more, too. bro. I'll tell you, you know, lots of people give me podcast ideas. I'm very good at, at um, finessing them. Yeah, but I'm not going to change my whole podcast. It's just like some ideas of stuff to add to the podcast. I just want to always, I always want to know why you, why you call it Marco Martin's revolution. To rip off Joe Rogan. Yeah, but his one is evolution. Exactly. Oh, so I'm okay. completely revolving. I'm not evolving. <laughs> Starting from the beginning. <laughs> revolution the from the <laughs> bottom to the top. Me. I'm just like, I'm like Joe Rogan, to don't do, know the gag. To do, to yeah. do a podcast that's yeah. the same as every other podcast, just yeah. two guys talking why didn't shit. You get, why didn't you get a co-host? So I'm starting a new podcast with Patrick Hayworth. The Pat and Marco Show. We're doing it as a podcast. Oh, as a podcast. It's going to be cool. It's going to be bomb. I hope it's Do bomb. you want to get behind it? Uh, it's a pock pod. Is it a, I'm yeah, not. I mean, I'm a little bit light skinned for Yeah, a but he's pot, definitely kind of like you said, right? <laughs> but his skin's lighter than mine. That's enough. That's enough for me. That's yeah. enough. I'm, listen, it's enough. I'll tell you right now, Marco, and you can clip this and you can and you can send it to people as a promo. There's no one better to work with in audio in Johannesburg than you right now. And on that bombshell, next year, Cape Town, 2022. Oh, you're studio there. I think so. Marco Martin's Revolution, Cape Town. Are we gonna do one? Johannesburg? I mean, yeah, should we do a voiceover off? Yeah, I want to do it. Hold on. <clears throat> what a uh, vodcast TV.
You've gone too much. Wait, wait. What, I don't much. know what the script is. Say it, say it quickly for me. This this episode is brought to you by Vodcast TV. Johannesburg's premier shared podcast, podcast studio. Johannesburg's premier shared podcast studio. Okay, I'm going to try to go that fast. Mm, 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 mm. <clears throat> this podcast is brought to you by Vodcast TV. Johannesburg's premier shared podcast studio. Ah, I killed that thing, good. my man. That was quite good. I killed that. I knocked that thing out the Why park. are you British? Why are you not British? When you do a voiceover, why is it not British? That's how they Slightly. used to do it back in the day, bro. That's how. That's a. That's a original 1990s, early 2000s no, 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 radio no. voice, my man. That's standard. Standard. Yeah, you never. <laughs> no one got that style anymore. People be like, "Yo, I booked that guy for VOs." Man, yeah. What happened? This is what we were saying earlier. Yeah. Is about like radio. Radio presenters used to have a presence. Yeah, but I think. Can I tell you? It's for me. For me. For me, mm. it's like no one sounds like that. No one sounds. That is like exactly that. how we sound when we speak to people. Yeah, no Check it out now like this that, weekend bro. at game yeah, only no. at game. <gasps> Did you Bring game along voice? a ticket. Yeah. I didn't do the game voice. Oh, man, you know who who I do sound a little bit like is Ian F. So I, I yeah. can sort of rip off the this weekend on Super Sport. Yeah, yeah Manchester yeah, yeah. United travel with the Red Devils that's to go and dope, head through. To, right, that's, that's not bad. That's pretty dope, bro. That it's is not bad. good. It's not bad. I could save oh, you guys shit. a little bit of money. Oh, like Super Sport, I could save you guys a little that bit. That is wild, right? actually. That's yeah. pretty That's pretty solid. And now since I've got glasses, I look a little bit like that Project Nightfall guy. Have you seen him? Yeah. That Project yeah, Nightfall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 In the, the world, one. there is something happening. Anyway, Simi, look into that camera over there and say fuck something. I told you, fuck wallets. Fuck wallets. Fuck all of the wallets everywhere. My bum is sore from wallets. Thank you, Samira, no for joining me on the Marco Martins Revolution. This episode was brought to you by Vodcast TV, Johannesburg's premier shared podcast studio platform. To get your own podcast that looks and feels and sounds just like this one, head on through to vodcasttv.com forward slash revolution and get a discount on your first order of a podcast series. We will see you again next time. Goodbye.